everyone. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone here to the house of the Lord, Sheep of Israel. And I do want to reach out. I see um, my little one, Cammy. She she wanted to say shalom, and one of the main reasons I want to reach out to her. She's a she's a little one. She's only uh, six years old. However, she has this appetite for learning the Bible. So I do like to keep her encouraged. But I do want to welcome everyone here to uh, the house the house of the Lord Sheep of Israel. And I do have a couple of announcements before we get kicked up. I do want to let you know that the um, the Proverbs in Hebrews book is available over at Lulu that they picked up from Amazon. However, Amazon is not releasing it, I believe, until, I believe, tomorrow or or Monday. Now, you can order it through Precept Mastery, and you can actually see at the bottom, if you go inside the uh, description even here, you can see the etymology study of Proverbs and Hebrews, the workbook. You can see the link there to where you can fill out the information to where it'll be shipped out. Now, with that, we're going through Precept Mastery, as always. If you're within America, there's no shipping involved, no shipping prices involved in that. And if you go through the other ones, you will be paying shipping. That's between those entities there. However, with Precept Mastery, there's no shipping charges involved if you're in America. <clears throat> so if that's something you decide to do, you can wait till after the Sabbath or on tomorrow to where you can purchase those workbooks. And we want to also let people know that we going a lot deeper into another way which another reason why I even want to stretch out to the younger ones. Because a lot of teachings that's going to be moving forward are actually going to be very parabolic in a lot of ways. And these are things to which you need to think on and continually move forward as we looking to join with the kingdom and looking to be with the creator of all things. So hopefully that as we go through here, as I always do, and I'm trying to make sure I slow down. I, some people say I, I speak kind of fast. I personally don't think so, but I'm not the one listening to me. So if they say I'm speaking fast, I, I must be speaking too fast for some people. So I'm going to try to continue to slow down to really explain things to where we can see what's happening in the scriptures. And we're going to continue to go through this in one second. Thank you, sorry. So we're going to continue to go through these scriptures to, to try to understand exactly what's happening within scripture. So the same thing is, if I sit there and, and everything is there, make sure, make sure that you jot down everything that you need to be jotting down and make sure that everything that you need to do when we try to understand scripture I always tell people to make sure we pay focus in, on certain things. So we got to be looking at something and we're going to be looking at this parable. It's a parable of a basket. And the parable of the basket is has a lot to do with what's going on in scripture. And why we need to pay attention to things that what God did more so what man has done. And 
if you ever notice, even in today's time, today's time, <clears throat> men has invented to where they have prolonged the life of fruit. They prolong the life of fruit by genetically constantly playing with it in people you'll see it it's called GMO or genetically modified and that's what it is and this is what they do and, and they start playing this role as they want to play God man seeking to do the same thing today with humans the identical thing to where they can genetically modify men they genetically modify the skin they also use skin and they like to come from different places they like to sit there and say they can genetically modify the skin the heart different parts of the body they was trying to play with different ways to where they was even hoping to where they can do even as some lizards and some things do to where they can grow another limb this is what they do so it comes down to the point different types of fruit you have a basket. I want you to keep that in mind because this is going to help us as we continually go through scripture. Many different types of fruit. You have good, bad, unedible, poisonous fruit. The Spirit of God also uses fruit to describe works. I want you to write that down. For many people who don't normally be over here, people teach contrary ways to what Bible actually tells you because everything is telling you in parables, these assemblages and relating something from the physical world to where he can show you what he's speaking about spiritually. That's why he speaks in parables. This is what it help us out a lot more. So if there's something good in fruit or something bad, if it's something bad, you don't partake in it. In these things, as we do, we're going to store them in a basket. And we're going to store it in the basket, good or bad of the fruit and it's stored in there for understanding I'm hoping you I'm hoping we getting this because once we get started it's gonna, it's gonna get cranked up so once we get good fruit or we get bad fruit we are gonna take that parable if you understand it or not parable that, uh, that you understand you're going to store that in your basket. Parables are speaking to us as a father to a child. This is why it's so important. The parables is spoken to us as the father speaks to a child. In Luke, we're going to look at 18 and verse 17. And he, and he says this. And Christ is speaking to us and for us to understand. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God, comparing a little child, comparing you to a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. If you don't understand this, the same way you need to explain something to a child, for the child to understand it, and when we go through these scriptures and you don't understand it, by no wise will you enter into the kingdom of God. 
it's not going to happen. That's why you have to understand the parables. This is why it's so important to understand when he's speaking something that the entire book from the front of the book to the back of the book is all parables. We need to understand them. It's that important. And we understand them, the stories with the moral behind it. We need to understand what was spoken. So when the Most High God gives us parables, one must remember the parable to understand the full meaning of the subject matter that we had just read. And we have to understand it and be then take it in the same way you have explained it to a child. These treasure stories and sometimes you see these things in the store and you store them and there's no other place where you're going to store them but in the basket. Within the basket is wisdom of the parable for understanding. It's a catchphrase. It's a flip around. Parables relates to everything for our learning, including our lifestyle changes that needed to be made. <clears throat> including the way we see other people. See, the spirit of God gives us visions and dreams. He gives us visions and dreams. And all are done in parables for us to think on it. The reason to relate to it and to come to a conclusion of the spiritual understanding. The way that we can see this is the best example that we're going to look at over in Acts. We'll look at Acts chapter, chapter 10. We're going to pick it up. In verse 11, we're going to see something that happened to Peter and watch how Peter seen this and he had to think on this. I want you to pay attention to this one. It says, and saw heaven open in certain vessels descending unto him as comparing it had been a great sheet at four corners and let down to earth. It's talking about Peter. Peter fell into a trance and he saw heaven open. Once it opened, he seen these vessels descending down in all manner of four footed beasts, which we're going to get into. Because he's going to explain this, what, what happened. Let's look at this and then we're going to talk some more. In verse 12, it says, when all manner of four footed beasts. See, you see, it's not saying... Because people say unclean beasts, but it's telling you all manner of four-footed beasts. Clean and unclean. Clean and unclean. We are taught that it was just all unclean animals that came down. But it's just clean and unclean. Because it's saying all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth. Including wild beasts something we need to pay attention to, including creeping things, including fowls of the air. In a voice from heaven, it happened. And we'll see this here. It says, including came a voice to him. So this voice came to him. And it's saying this, you know, watch how we need to really understand the England language. Watch how important this is to understand the England language. Rise, comma. Rise, comma. Peter, semicolon. That within itself, just those two, Technically, is a teaching within itself. But it's just saying, rise, Peter. <clears throat> He's done with that. He's done with that. Because Peter was the one doing something that nobody else was doing. But we're going to see something. It says, kill. 
and eat. Kill and eat. Saying a lot. But we're going to find out a lot of things entailed in this where we're going to find out even for us. Peter said, and many people are going to sit there and say, well, he's talking to, to God. And Peter said this, if watch what he says. Not so. Lord, not going to do it. You, you to love your Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. You think about that. He told Peter to do something. And Peter said, not so, Lord, I'm not doing it. This is why it's so important to take your time when we go through scripture. If God tell you to jump, Don't and he don't give you a height. All you do is jump. If he say jump, don't sit there and say how high. You just jump. He already know the limit on what height you're going to get to anyway. So why are you going to ask him how high? Peter says this though to him, because as if the Lord don't get nothing. Not so, Lord. Not doing it. <clears throat> In fact, he gonna he gonna he gonna he gonna explain this to him. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, I've never did this, so why are you asking me to do it? <coughs> Excuse me. Why are you telling me to do something, Lord? And I'm not going to do it because I never did it. I ain't never had anything common or I never had anything that was unclean. But it goes on board. Verse 15, it says this. It says, the voice spake unto him again a second time. What have God cleansed? What he had cleansed? That call not thou common. <clears throat> So, when that sheet comparing that came down and all manner of beasts was on it and he told him to kill and eat. Peter told him no. But he, Peter made a statement to him <clears throat> telling him I never eaten anything that was common or unclean. This in verse 17, it, as it went on, and it says this was done thrice. It was done three times to Peter. Three times. And Peter kept saying no. Then, then, and the most I had to tell him, what I've cleansed, don't call it common. So, this vessel was received up again into heaven. But Peter, this was a vision that Peter had seen. This is what we really have to understand. Because people are used this very verse these few scriptures that I just read in the essay that God cleansed everything. And he never was saying that in the beginning. He never said that. He told Peter to kill and eat. But we need to know what he's saying when he's saying kill and what he's telling you what to eat. Because he's not saying what you think he's saying. That's the problem we have. We have to, as a whole, when we go to the scriptures, Read it, take our time, understand it, 
digest it, and then learn how we can apply that to our lives. That's what we need to receive. Because Peter did something that he didn't take it real quickly, but we're going to see what Peter did. It says, now while Peter doubted himself, what this vision which he has seen should mean. What the he has seen should mean. Common and unclean. Because he told God to have anything that was common or unclean. So now Peter need to know what that vision he has seen should mean. Remember the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate. So now Peter don't know what the vision mean, but Peter clearly seeing is not talking about food. It's not talking about eating something, but it's talking about learning something. Some are common and some are unclean. The voice told Peter to do something. Peter to kill. To kill them through the law. Kill through the law is what he wanted to do. We're going to see some of that in. When we look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 19. And part of it is telling you this. It says, for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. It can be hairy, but we're going to work that out because it's telling you exactly what we need to do. For through the law of flesh, we are dead to God. One must kill flesh to live unto God. All common and unclean flesh is dead in the sight of God. The same reason why he's telling Peter to kill and eat. Think about the parable of showing concerning one to eat, to learn, to learn. Let's look at something. I want to show you something here in John chapter four. We're going to look at verse 31. It says, and meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. They tell him, they tell him, your house, hey, you, come on, eat. But his response was this. His response was completely different. He, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. It's a flip around. They want him to eat what they sitting out there. And he telling you he got meat. He got bread, but you don't know what it is. God let down a sheet with all manner of beasts and creeping things to Peter and told Peter to kill and eat. And Peter sit there and tell God, he ain't never ate that, bro. He ain't never ate that. I'm, I'm not doing it. I haven't eaten anything that was common or unclean. I can't do that. So, Christ is speaking to them, telling them technically the same identical thing. But he gets better. Verse 33 says, you're going to see something. It says, for that reason, said the disciples one to another, hath any man brought him uh, to eat. Has any man brought him something to eat? Anybody. Anybody. The disciples immediately thinking physical and carnally, not spiritually of the parable or the similitude on what Christ was actually talking about to them. So it's the same way we need to look at something to understand what is happening. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says here. Verse 34. Yahweh said unto them, My meat 
is to do the will of him that sent me, including to finish his work. What? What? We see, Yahawashai taught many people, common people. So we need to properly understand what that means in unclean. His bread is from heaven was resting upon him. Is what he was actually trying to get them to see. He present his body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God for use. Is what he was doing. So you see Peter in the vision that did not understand it as it shows the three times. This is why you see right here. It says, now while Peter doubting himself what the vision he has seen should mean, remember three the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry unto him. They went there. But Peter had to understand what was happening there. But let's look at this. Let's drop down to verse 28. Actually, it's highlighted. It says, because we're going to see something Peter's going to say. It says, And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing. For a man that is a follower of Christ to keep company. It's unlawful for a man that is a follower of Christ to keep company or come unto another nation. But God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You think Paul got it then? You think Peter got it then? Peter seen the vision, then he understood what it was talking about. So what is the fruit? Because fruit describes the works. And whether it's good or bad depends on your or ability <clears throat> to be obedient to God based on the works. This is what it's doing. Let's look at something. I want to show you a little bit deeper here. And we're going to keep going a little bit deeper. <clears throat> we're going to look at James chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. And James says this, he says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. More so this, if you have a basket and it's empty or had dead fruit in it, then it's just as empty as with having nothing in it at all. If you have picked up fruit that you didn't want to go rush up to the tree and climb and pick, well, you had to put in some work to, to go to the tree and pick it off the vine or pick it off the branch. You didn't do none of that work. You just went and I'm just going to get what failed. I'm going to get this off the ground. Many of us, we this is what we do. We we choose not to do that. We choose not to put in no work. We just want to get it from the ground. And why James said this. He said, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith. I just wait till they drop. I just wait till they drop and I'm a I'm going to pick them up. And James said, including I have works. So he's saying, you have faith, but you're not doing nothing. You wait until it hit the ground, then you get it. So you don't have to put in no work to do it. He said, but I have work. I'm going to go to the tree and I'm going to climb the tree and get the fruit. So he's saying this. So he this is what he's making all 
the 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 similitude of. Show me thy faith without thy works. So you show me that, which is your basket technically empty, because if you're getting those fruit and everything from the ground, you're not going to eat it. You're not going to eat it. You follow me. So he's saying that he said, and I show you the, my faith by my works. I guarantee you're going to eat everything that he even picked off that tree. <clears throat> you're going to pick everything that he gathered. Everything that he done picked from that tree, I promise you, you going to eat it. So every man has a basket and the fruit that's gathered in it will exhibit his works from it. Are you with me? I need you to stay with me. I need you to stay with me on this. So what I'm saying is this. If you have somebody who's gathering fruit from the ground, you know, it's rotten burst and picked all over it ants is going in and out of it it's um, mushy on one side and then you add this other one who done picked the fruit picking and choosing picking and choosing as he want what fruit he want off that tree you tell me which one you gonna eat from because if you're not going to eat from the basket where you got it from the ground, it might as well, the basket might as well have been empty. Might as well have been because you're not going to eat from it. And, and, and this is what we gathering from the ground, picking it up. And this is what we was doing before. We was doing this. We was gathering fruit from the ground that fall into the ground and we was getting that. And to assist us to make the right decisions, even if we want to get the fruit. If we wanted to make the right decisions to get the fruit, things, things, things are set up for us. Things are set up for us. <clears throat> let me, let me, let me show you something here. And it's a, uh, Gonna get to a hard little parable, but many of us, <clears throat> excuse me, it will understand what I'm, what I'm saying and where it's coming from. In Second Andrews chapter two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse eighteen. It says, "For they, for thy help, will I send my servants." Will I send my servants? Essay and Jeremy. Interesting, isn't it? Two of the most important things we need to actually see. Two most important functionings that we need to understand. The functioning of those two names. It's what we really need to know. It'd be a waste of time to tell you what they are. Because most people, it's not going to know how to apply it to what we need to do. This is why we have to think on things. And it says this, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for the twelve trees. 12 laden laden with diverse fruit with all kinds of fruit with all kinds of fruit so we need to really get what is actually going on here Did we understand what was going on here? Most of us are going to say no. And the reason we'll say no, because one of the main things we don't do, we don't sit there and, and try to go through the scriptures to see what actually, what it said. That's part of the problem. 
because if their counsel is to separate it from us all, including to prepare 12 trees laden with diverse fruit, diverse ways of these fruits, the works, the spirit. The needs fruit has many ways. These servants are required. They are required to do one thing. They require to do one thing. I'm going to show you this and hopefully this will clear up some of some of our um, complications. It's in, and this is what they require to do. It's in, nourish thy children and O thou good nurse, establish their feet. This is clear. So, to nourish it need to be teaching the children that God nourish them to eat another fruit of the trees to do right. And it's telling you more because it's to teach the fatherless, to give understanding to the poor, to defend the orphans and to clothe the naked. Cause you're going to see all that. If you go back and read, it's going to be telling you all this, what it need to be doing. Heal the brokenhearted, help the weak and don't laugh at the lame or scorn them. Defend the maim and, and it's telling you about all this stuff, even with the blind, to where you can give them, to where you can give them sight to see. You go read it, it's going to tell you all that there. All that's going to be there. And you look at verse 26 and it speaks a little bit more. Compare. Compare. Compare for the servants whom I have given thee. We can't miss that. He wants you to compare for the servants whom I have given thee. You have some that is given. You have some that came other ways. He's telling you this right up front. Compare them. You have some that you pay for. You have some that you pay the they, 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 they bills, the clothing bills, the cars, the houses, the transportation. And every want that they can want of this world. He's saying compare his servants to whom he given thee. Compare them. Because they are to nourish you. He should not fleece you. Compare them. You see it right here. As, as what we always teach is telling you nothing but a comparison. You have preachers that charge. You have preachers that don't charge. So if you compare for the servants whom I have given thee, you compare them. And when you compare them, don't try to rank a, a one of his with one of theirs. You want to call theirs or whatever you want to call them. Then don't call his that. If you saying he's a prophet, then don't call one of his a prophet as if you in the same context of the language on which you're speaking. Because people are going to group them. This is what it's saying. You compare them. In comparing them, he says, there shall not one of them perish. So what he's saying in his full clarity is telling you when you compare them and you is being taught and given to establish your, your, your walk, there shall not one of them perish. Nobody who's following that with is coming out of their mouths and telling you the way you need to go. And you following that because you following the voice of Christ, not the voice of that man, but the voice of Christ. Cause he presented his body wholly acceptable unto God. Them, not one of them going to perish. Not one of them going to fall away. Not one. He holds you to this. He says, for I will require them 
from among thy number. That, that's serious. He's saying if they lose one by anything, because he's he's sitting there, he's not he's not asking no questions there. If they lose one, that's that that was his. That person has a problem. That's one of the main reasons why I tell people. I don't sugarcoat. And I don't turn back. But I'm not going to sugarcoat something to you. Period. It's not going to happen. People, as some people do, they they go to these other churches and they they sit there and say, well, I'm going to stay out for a while so they can, I need him to call me so he can <clears throat> make me feel better and do these things. And if not, I'm just going to stay out. Okay. That's why it's good not to turn back. Because they're doing it for facetious reasons. Because he's telling you, there shall not one of them perish. Because they're not there for you. Everyone that's here right now, they're not here for me. See, I can't put myself, oh, look at me, who I am. No, no, see, get off of that. Because you're not here for me. You only time you'll be here for me if I'm here and I'm boasting about myself, 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 then you here for me by what I do. But we here to get the word. We here to see what thus said the Lord. Nothing more. And he's telling them, and don't you lose not one of mine. You lose one, I'm gonna hold you responsible. Let's look at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go to John chapter 17. John 17, we're gonna pick this up at verse 12. Actually, this is highlighted, just so having to be highlighted. It says, Now Christ is speaking, Yahweh Shai is sitting there. Watch what he says. He says, While I was with them, these ones, right? He's talking about. In the world, I kept them in thy name. I kept them in your way. I kept them in thy way. In your way. Because they his. But watch this. Those that thou givest me, I have kept. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. But he goes on more. And none of them I lost. He didn't lose not one. Yahweh Shai, when he was walking and he's telling everybody what's going on, he didn't lose one. But the son of perdition, the son of Satan, not his. So he don't have to worry about that one. Many people are going to drop away from the truth. You ain't got to worry about them. See, while his true servants are here in this world, you must keep his people in his way, in his name, in his way, period. Only those that are given and none, not one will be lost. And that is to fulfill scripture. Because he's going to tell you that. It's, you see right here, it says, because the one that's lost, that scripture might be fulfilled. Showing you that's the one he don't want. This must happen. People uh, sit there and they tell me about things and and they tell me about things and 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 they say, well, we're going to tell you what? I hate that this one gone and this one gone and that one gone. And, and um, I sit there and speak sometimes to the elders and say, I, I get it, but I don't turn back. We keep moving forward. We keep, no matter what, moving forward. Because 
I don't know if that did it. That's not my prerogative. My prerogative is only to teach the word of God. Not to sit there to run and chase people for personal reasons. Meaning they sit there and they get caught up in themselves. And they feel that you should come and chase me for a minute and woo me back. No, you got the wrong place. That's one of the most important things why he says, I'm going to give them to you. So nobody else can entice you or get you to do that based on money that you've given them. Let's look at something. Let's look at something here. We're going to go to John and we're going to go to six. John chapter six. We're going to pick it up at 63. What is 63? And it tells you, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, not me. Spirit quickeneth. Don't have nothing to do with me. That's why I say, you're not here for me. Don't think you're here for me. It's the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. I don't profit nothing. This flesh you see, when you see me, when I'm in the back and you see me, that profits absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. In their life. That's all. Has nothing to do with me. This is why we have so many people. Want to put themselves on pedestals. When they teach. Because then they. Oh I'm this. I'm No no no. Don't get off that pedestal. This flesh don't profit absolutely nothing. You think it profit? You come to, come to my house sometime. And my wife sitting there, she wants something. Talk all kind of trash. Actually told on me the other day. But and then he called himself gonna get on me, but I already had done it a year ago. She gonna bring up some trees that she wanted me to plant in the backyard. And I, I'm sitting there like, no, nah, but the tree the tree one of them had broke off based on something she did. And Elder Jenkins sitting there like, Man, you didn't both of them gonna try to double team me. And I'm saying, dude, the trees were put up last year. Last year. Not sitting there holding me on some type of pedestal. She wanted her trees up. I had the trees. I didn't put them in back there, but I had them put back there. But you have people that think that they're so high and so mighty that even with their wives sit there and seek them to do things, they can't do them. They can't do them. She'll sit there and and and, and wash the clothes and hey, okay, you get ready to help fold. You mean you gonna fold some clothes? I can do it with a pot of what? We got to fold those clothes. Just letting you know. Okay, you if you think you're trying to put yourself, if you just got an inkling you want to put yourself on a pedestal, I'm letting you know you ain't on no pedestal. Period. Whether you like it or not, this is the point people need to understand. But he says more here. Watch what goes on here. It says, but there are some of you that believe not. See, there's some people who don't believe the words that's coming out of my mouth. Some of the people are not going to believe. Just not going to be. It says, it says this in it's really important to really understand what he's saying here. 
really close to real important on what he what he what he's what, what's being said in the scripture. It says, "For Yahweh shall knew be from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him." <clears throat> you see that? This is a lot of people' problem. A lot of people' problem. Tell you the same thing is this: a lot of people believe. In 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 one of, one of my biggest protectors and one of my biggest um, uh, uh, champions for for me is Elder Jenkins. He's he's one of the. I'm I speak to him almost every day. And that's he see things as. I already see. And I'm saying this to be to be really clear. Please believe me, as I explained to him once before. Even people who who know <clears throat> and I know from the beginning where their heart is. Cause it, it can't change. There's certain things in them that it never change. Don't ever think that I don't know. I'm just not going to act any different. But don't think I don't know. He give you a spirit of discerning other spirits. Don't think I don't know. And I knew it from the beginning. I just don't change it. I just treat you just as I treat anybody else. And I'm gonna let you pull your own I'm gonna let you pull your own strings to hang your own self. So don't ever think that you're deceiving me. Cause he gives you that spirit to know those other spirits. And the thing is this. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my father. And he's going to send everything your way to prove the point. To prove that point. Good and bad going to come. And when people find out this and they find out that that way, what happened is this. What's going on is this. When a lot of people find out, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Exactly the point. Because I let people know up front. up front this is why we had those problems so it says this again it says then he says the same thing even to the people that follows will ye also go away you also go away. See, this, this, these are zero. These are zero sum games here. The reason why, because the same thing when you look at went right back to verse in uh, Second Address, chapter two, verse eighteen, where he sent his servants, who's after the council sanctified and prepared twelve trees laden with diver fruits. This is the point in the understanding. More so, more so, to help us out. We look at Revelations and it clarifies a few things because they're going to show you and counsel you on certain things. So we just need to really get 
the better understanding of what's going on. When you look at chapter uh, 22 in Revelations, starting at verse 1, it says this. It says, And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. So are we, are we getting this? Are we seeing what's happening? Clear as crystal. Proceeding out from the throne of God, including the of the Lamb. So you've been over time shown a pure river of water. People with understanding of life and the understanding is given clear as crystal. The word is coming from the temple of God out of a lamb of flesh. So all is happening. But he says more here. He says more here. And it says in the midst of the street of it on either side of the river was there a tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits. Twelve manner of fruits. And yield her fruit every month in the leaves of the tree were for healing the nations of the nations. So on this journey, on this this river, that this river, this stream that, that goes out, that has went out to water his garden, is twelve manner of fruit that's in the street that you can see and you can see and partake of those fruits for healing the nation to where you won't have no more conscience. No more understanding to what either no reason to pick up fruit off the ground. So we need to fill our basket with understanding, not by sight of the flesh, but by the voice through obedience. Are you with me? Let's look at something. Let's look at something real close and get a better understanding on what is happening here. We're going to go to Mark chapter 18, chapter 8 and verse 15. And hopefully we are getting this parable on what is going on. It says, he charged them saying, take heed, beware of leaven of the Pharisees. Wow. Beware leaven of the Pharisees. It's in including the leaven of Herod. Did we get it? I'm going to share something with you. Herod has a functioning, as I said, all words have a meaning, has a functioning behind it. So don't think he's telling you leaven of Herod is just telling you Herod. Because most people are going to also pinpoint a man. This is the point. So Herod is telling you about the glory of skin. That's why I said the leaven also of the glory of skin, flesh. That's what he's saying. So we have to beware the leaven of the Pharisees and also beware the leaven of flesh. The glory of it. The glory of it. And it says what? In verse 16, it says, They reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. Exactly the point. We have no understanding whatsoever. He actually says this, and we're going to see it. 
Yahweh Shai speaks and he, he says this. He says this. He says, why reason ye? Why, why are you going to reason ye? Why y'all going to talk about this? You guys are going to talk about all this understanding. You're going to say all these things. Why are you going to do this? Because you have no bread. Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. You don't understand. Any, you don't get anything, but y'all are going to reason amongst yourselves. Have ye your heart? Yet hardened? Have it? The point is this. Having eyes, you don't see. See ye not. No. Why? Because you're looking on a man. But your heart is so hardened and having ears, you hear ye not. You don't even want to hear him. And do ye not remember? Don't remember? You don't remember? So you have eyes to see, but you don't understand anything. You can't see it. Don't get it. You have an ears, but you don't hear. So I got a question for you. I got a question for you because this is getting ready to get serious. I want this all on one page to where we can get it. Because he says this. And don't ever be quick to rush what's getting ready to happen. But I promise you, some people are still going to do it. Verse 19. Yahweh Shai did this. He says, when I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up they say unto him 12 wow wow I broke five loaves among 5,000 among 5,000 how many fragments did you take up 12 Do you know how many people teach on this, thinking they teaching us? And, and don't I gotta be cool? Cause I, they took they took up twelve baskets off of five loaves. Really? Are you kidding me? Let me show you something. This, 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 this. Let me, let me, let, 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 I just want to show you something. Let's look at Matthew right here. Go to 15. We're going to pick it up at 26. And let me make that larger. Hopefully that'll do it. Yes. 26. Let me show you something. They, they were trying to get people... To, to to help in this and this. But Yahweh I said this. He made this statement. That's why I'm showing you this. He says, Is it not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs? You gonna take up those fragments. Let me let me just wait and we're gonna we're gonna figure something out. We're gonna figure something out. Because it wouldn't be right to do this right at the right at the gate. So we're gonna wait a minute. So he said this. And he said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs, eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Exactly the point. Dogs. Dogs. And he responded. He said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. People say, well, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I know a lot of us are not going to get this. As I said, 
it's a parable being spoken to you. How in the world? Five. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's go down to verse 20. I'm going to unhighlight this one. It says, because then you talk again, he says, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets of fragments took you up? They said, seven. I'm just, I'm just pausing. I just, I don't I, I don't I don't get how we not seeing this. He broke five loaves among five thousand and he took up twelve baskets and he did this again with seven loaves among four thousand and they took up seven baskets. You tell me. You tell me, people will sit there and just talk about, oh, he did this, he did that. No, he's talking about fragments, crumbs that he talking about how many, and somebody got to get this. Somebody got to get this. Somebody has to get this. And nobody don't think nothing's wrong with this. Nobody don't see nothing wrong with this. In fact, verse 21, it says this. He said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? How you, you, nobody's getting this. We can't sit there and say we all got it because if we all got it, we all wouldn't know what he was talking about. We would have knew what was going on. This is why he can take three loaves to a dang church. And how many baskets of fragments would he take up? Probably take up 45 baskets. 45 baskets probably get taken truck loads. Truck loads. He can go sit here and teach this and break Three loaves among 80,000 people. How many fragments you, how many baskets you think they, they might, they might take up a thousand fragments, a thousand baskets. What? We don't understand it. Don't get it. This is why we don't understand the parables that he's speaking. He said this right here. Let's go back to John chapter 8. 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 43. Part of our problem. It says, Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Exactly the point. He broke some bread, crumbs fell, and guess what we did? <laughs> Because we can't understand, we don't have eyes to see. And the same is the question that I ask people sometimes to throw just to see where they are. And the question is this why do some fish have scales and some don't? Why do, and they both in the same places. Are we getting this? See, just like I said, I just as I said, and I just kind of glanced over and seen one person sitting there saying that people that believe. And just as I said, not thinking on the question, and that ain't why those crumbs were there. Why I said you need to think on these things besides sitting there, oh, let me answer the question. This is it. And you're wrong. That ain't what what happened. People is so quick to want to be, I'm the one who know this and sitting there. Oh, let me, let me put it. 
people that believe. No, that's not the answer. Don't know how to sit back and, and think on stuff. This is our problem. Worse than Peter. Quick to try to answer, to be the first one out there when you should have thought on it. Just like I said, we ain't over here playing games. This ain't no ABC camp. You should have thought on it. Don't play the game. We need to sit there and think on what is being told on apparel. People will sit there automatically, as he said, kill Peter and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord. Think on what is being given out. People that believe. <laughs> I'm telling you, we can't make this stuff up. We can't make this kind of stuff up. Could you see it? Same as I said, why do some fish have scales and some don't? You got fish in fresh water, you got fish in salt water. You got fish in salt water who got scales and some without scales. You got fish in fresh water scales without scales. Why is it like that? Why? Better yet, why do we have to wait for a thunder the sound to know that a storm is coming. This is the problem. This is the problem. See, and, 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 and as it said here again, what is going on here? See, same thing as she said. She said, Truth, Lord, yet dogs eat crumbs which fall from their master's table. Many would say they are not never part of the dog family. People, oh no, I'm not a dog. Don't try to put me with a dog. If you've been in a Christian church, you've been part of a dog family. Well, what about you, Elder Johnson? I've been part of a dog family. I never exclude myself. And this is why. Let's look at some of this. Let's look at Revelations then. We're going to go to chapter 22. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. And it says this. He's very clear about what he's saying. It's in I, Yahawashai, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. These things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Are we serious? Yeah, this is dead serious. To testify these things in the churches. And guess what we did? We'll sit there and we'll go in the church and he can break five loaves and take up 12 baskets. He can go in another one and break off seven loaves among 4,000 and take up seven baskets. And then we get one person say, them that believe. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're so quick because we want to be in the know. He testified what in the churches. Let's look at it. Verse 14, it says, Bless are they. Wisdom is given to them that do his commandments. That's all he's telling, telling you. This is what he's telling you right there. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Exactly the point. And he testified these things in the churches and he's telling you, and if you don't be doing this for verse 15 tells you, for without a dogs. Were we in the church? Yeah, we was in the church. Okay. 
He took up all them loads, took up all them fragments. Okay. Good dogs. Good dogs. Not only that, we was including sorcerers. Some of us were whoremongers. Some of us were murderers. Some of us were idolaters. And some of us, whatever maketh and loveth that maketh a lie, that was us. <clears throat> that was us. And he testified these things in the churches. It's like we're going to a dog kennel to the church. Cleaning up poop for dogs. And the Bible testified these things among 5,000 and they took up 12 baskets of fragments. That's craziness. Craziness. Did it again to the four and he took up seven baskets. Craziness. Let me show you something. Let's look at something. Let's go back over here. We're going to look at John chapter 6 in verse 12. In verse 12, we want to see something here. Verse 12, it says this. It says this. When they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Nothing be lost, but I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Just so, just so we can be on the same page. I just want to show you this. So we can be on the same identical page. Let's look at Luke chapter 8. Pick it up at uh, verse uh, 8. 8 is going to tell you this. This is why. It says, And another fell on good ground. Some, some, of, the, some of the crumb, it's to you, it fell on good ground. And sprang up and bear fruit a hundredfold. Some that said these things, ye cried out that ye have ears to hear, let him hear. That's interesting, ain't it? See, because if those fragments is there, then some should have fell on good ground. Some should have fell on good ground. How in the world they taking up baskets? Figure that one out. You figure that one out. Verse 13 is telling you this. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with fragments and of the five uh, barely loaves which remained over above unto them that had that had eaten. Guess what? Some fell among thorns, choked it. Some liked the moisture. And he said he don't want nothing. Nothing should be lost. Nothing should be lost. I'm telling you that right there. See, in the reason he even saying it, even in that way, is what you got to remember. You got to keep all the, you got to keep everything. You got to keep everything. In Matthew chapter 5, in verse 18. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall no way pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Not one piece of crumb, not one crumb, Gather them up. Gather them up. Let nothing, if we sit there and we let these crumbs and he got to gather them up. Are you serious? Nothing to remain. He telling you, let's go back. I just want to keep, keep this in mind as, as we look at this. Gather up the fragments that nothing that remain that nothing be lost. He ain't trying to give it to nobody else. He not trying to give it to nobody else. In fact, let's look at the law. Let's look at the law. Let's 
Let's look at the law to find out what's happening. In Exodus chapter 12, picking it up at verse 10, it says this. It says this. It says, And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. In, in that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn. Ye shall burn. You should burn with fire. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So what's needed in the basket? What is needed in the basket? See, as I said, as I said, as we go in and we go in and sitting there and understanding many of these things, but as I said, these are parables that's being spoken. Parables spoken. Something for you to think on, not for you to keep sitting there. Oh yeah, let me put this in there. Let me put that in there. Let me tell them this. And I know that no, you see, you're wasting your time. Wasting time. You're not impressing anyone. The impression is for no one. It's saying this. These, these, these are done in this way. It says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to other in parables. To others is in parables. It's going to always be spoken in a parable, and this is why a lot of people going to get them always mixed up. See, we like to come to to, 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 to places and already come, we're going to come with a luggage. We're going to come with a luggage that we know what the Bible is saying. And, and then they're going to speak carnally. This is what happens. Going to speak carnally. Not knowing the functioning of what things going on behind the scene. You need to know what's going on behind the scene because that's why it's spoken in the parable. It's talking in a spoken in a similitude. Something that's showing you carnally that you need to understand spiritually. So that's why he's saying those things are done in parables. That seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. For that reason alone. For that reason alone. And many using vain theology. And saying, and they're going to rely on that salvation, and they rely on a man which is not on the Spirit of God. This is why many of us will present ourselves as what Cain did. As to what Cain did. This is why we hold this. Let's look at this. Let's look at what Cain did. So we, so we, so we all be on the same page. In Genesis chapter 4, picking up at verse 3, I want to enlarge that to where we can get it all on one. On verse 3, same thing like it said. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Spirit of God. That's what he did. Tell me we don't do this. You got people right now, they're doing it, they did it down. They sitting there bringing fruit of the ground and they want to answer with that. Peter thought on what the vision he had seen should mean. Meaning he had to think on the parable, what he had just learned should mean to where he can properly understand it. But people will automatically try to sit there, this is what it is. They don't tell you why they do that. They think they Moses. They think they Moses. These things is done for our learning to where we can clearly get what's saying. But if we don't take the time to understand what is actually being told to you and it's spoken to you in a parable and you just react like you're a fighter, you, you, you know, they punch and they counter punch. OK, you you in the you in it for the wrong you in it for the wrong reasons. Wrong reasons. Bring an offering like Cain. Bring it from the ground. From the ground. In fact, let's let's build on that same thought. 
is built on that thought. In Malachi chapter 1, and it says this in verse 7. In verse 7, it says this. And when he brought that, ye offered polluted bread upon my altar. You offered polluted bread upon my altar. Christ saying that. You bring in luggage and you offering polluted bread upon my altar. You bring your own understanding, your own knowledge, your own wisdom. You're going to offer that to me from off the ground. And the first thing we say is, wherein have we polluted thee? And he tells you, the table of the Spirit of God is contemptible. We have brought polluted bread to him consistently on a consistent basis. This is what we do. In fact, let's jump down to verse 12. Because he speaks some, 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 some harsh things on what we did. And deservingly so, we deserve everything that he's saying. Because we've done it. And he said this, he said, but ye profaned it in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted. In the fruit thereof, is, you see what he's saying? In the fruit thereof that we didn't take out the basket, even his meat is contemptible. Even, even our understanding, our thoughts, it's contemptible. Are you, are you seeing what he's saying? We didn't brought him fruit doing the same, no different than Cain. No difference. We brought it to him. We brought we brought him we brought him that. And now he's telling you it's contemptible. And the first thing we do is we don't think so. So the same thing is this. And just to bring it clear to us, to make sure all of us together understand this as a whole, we're gonna bring the works of the ground. And the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna offer him things of adultery. People say, why do you say that? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. We'll sit there and sit there and sit there and tell people, well, she ain't putting out. She had an operation or she just being stubborn, stiff neck. She ain't putting out. <clears throat> I got, I got, I got, I got willy leg over there. She just swing from the shiny lips and go show up in a church building saying God's there and you offer adultery. Out of ground. She couldn't do it. Or one, as one guy said it, talking about you got to have spares. You got to have spares. I can show you a video he's saying it. Don't want to do that. We didn't take the same thing. Now we want to go test the product before we get married. So what we want to do, we want to make sure our equipment work. So you go fornication. Well, I want to make sure I work. I want to make sure everything works right. Okay. So I'm going to offer fornication. That's what I'm going to offer. I'm going to offer fornication. And what's bad about it, you sit right in the church saying that's supposed to be a God there, even though he's not there. But just say that's what they saying. And your girlfriend and boyfriend, as soon as you get out of there or before you came there, you're kicking boots. Fornication. Want to make sure y'all are a good fit. You offer that to the Lord. You're offering that to him. Oh yeah, let me offer this to the Lord. Here, Lord. This is me, Lord. Some gonna offer lust. Some gonna offer lust. Some idolatry. Don't bring it right up to him. some idolatry. Some going to offer hatred. Some 
going to offer witchcraft. Some variants, some ill emotions. Going to offer it. Promise you, you're going to offer it because you're going to bring fruit of the ground. Some wrath, some strife. Some seditions, and a whole bunch of us, a whole bunch of us offer heresies. Whole bunch of us offer that. Offer heresies all day long. Some drunkenness. Some rivaling and some uncleanness. This is what we got to come to. This is what we need to watch. See, this is what, see, this is what we do. This is doing nothing more than being sorry about what we offer. Meaning we're sorry. We just a sorry case of flesh. That's what I'm saying. We are offering something that is sorry and we sorry offering it. That's what I'm saying. We're provoking and we're self-righteous and that's sickening. Being and bringing polluted bread to God and it's defiled, unclean, it's tainted and profane. This is what we do. We can't get around that. We can't sit there and tell it any other kind of way. Because we're going to offer that to God. To God. Let's look at verse 13. I want to get verse 13. I want to get that all on one. Yeah, we can get it all on one. And we look at verse 13. <laughs> you see, he told, he's doing a lot of talking. And when he's doing a lot of talking, that's something we shouldn't even be wanting him doing. He says this. He said also, remember, <laughs> we, don't, we, we shouldn't even have him saying that to us. Remember, you, you should be saying, oh boy, he, he getting ready to drop some more hammer on us. Yes, he is. He getting ready to drop some more hammer on each and every one of us. It is a weariness, is it? And ye have snuffed at it. Yeah, we went and picked up that stuff along the ground. We have picked up this stuff along the ground. And he's saying this. Ye have brought that which was torn. Think about that. We done brought torn things to him. In the lane? Tell me we did. The sick? Think about that. Thus ye brought an offering. Shall I accept it of your hand? Thus said the Spirit of God. Should I accept this crap? Should, should, should I really accept this? You didn't sit there. And you done told somebody you done did something. Didn't help them. But you think you done did something. <sighs> Have you ever seen this is what we do. We'll sit there and get people that's hungry, lame, sick, and blind. And if the news come, we want to brag about what we done for one day. And that person going to be hungry every day. We didn't teach him how to fish. We just fed him because we were going to get some, we were going to get some limelight. In fact, let's just, let's look at this. Let's look at this a little bit closer. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke 18 in verse 11. 
problem. Here you go a problem. The Pharisee stood and prayed, thus with himself. You, you see, he ain't praying to God. He prayed thus with himself. That's why I keep telling people, look at the scripture real close. Because they going to keep thinking he was praying to God and it's telling you. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And people were thinking he was praying to God. I promise you, you can go walk in any church. Go walk in any church. And they're going to tell you these, these, a Pharisee and a, and a publican was praying to God. And it's telling you what this Pharisee did. He prayed thus with himself. Braggadocious. This is what we do. Don't think we're good at doing this. Please don't think we're good at doing this. We are really good at doing this. As he prayed with himself, he going to let God in on this. He, God, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Come here, God. Come here. I want to tell you something. He said, I thank thee. Not you. I thank me. Because he's praying to himself. <laughs> I thank me. I'm not as other men are as torturers. Are you serious? I bet you, I bet you the most high dropped his jaw, hit the ground. Probably looking at him like, what? Man, he praying to himself, hey God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men as a torturer. But in storage, most people don't know what he's actually saying, but I'm going to share it with you so you know what he's talking about. So we just know what he's talking about. He's telling you right up front that he don't use usury. He don't give stuff to people and put interest on it. Or he collecting debt or doing restitution. And making people believe that they owe people, because a lot of us do, a lot of us do, to know the mystery of the kingdom. So you real quick, just to show you something. Just to show you something. We're gonna look at something. And then we're gonna come right back. We're gonna go to Haggai, chapter two and verse eight. Watch this. Watch this. It's coming, it actually is highlight. It says, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Spirit of God of hosts. So everything belongs to God. So we know that. I just want you to see that. So that belongs to God, but he's praying with himself. Just keep that in mind. He's praying with himself. And he's saying, I think I'm not a story. I'm charging usury. This. So he's in the position of God. I ain't charging interest. I'm not doing those things. He says this, he says, unjust, adulterers. Then he's saying he ain't no adulterer. Dang, that's serious. He ain't a daughter, but he praying to him. He praying to himself. Actually, let me show you that. Let me show you. Let me show you what he's doing. I want to just show you what he's doing. We're just going to keep this in mind because it might, it might be comical to you because it's kind of comical to me, but I just want to show you what he's doing. Matthew chapter six, and we're going to pick it up at verse 24. And it tells you this. No man can serve two masters. Either he's going to hate one and love the other or else he going to hold the one he going to despise the other you cannot serve God and man he's talking to God but he's talking about mammon <laughs> that's why it's so funny that's why it's actually kind of funny because he's thanking himself and just telling God that's that's why it's funny he said I'm not like them I'm not like them I'm not an adulterer because I'm loving, I'm loving me a whole lot of me. God, I'm loving me a whole lot of me. I know you see them people even doing them selfies. They, they loving themselves a whole lot of them. He says, or even as this publican. <laughs> You don't, you can't tell me, you don't, you can't even tell me it's not funny. Cause I'm telling you, if he's sitting there, he's telling God how much he, God, I love my, hey, dude, no, I'm not worshiping you, dude. I'm just telling you what I do. It's 
what he's doing. Or even as this publican. So publican, many people actually uh, who always speak, they say they speak Hebrew and everything else. And they never tell you what publican actually mean. But to show you again the stupidity that's based out there based on doctrine. It's based on doctrine. To show you they don't speak Hebrew or Paleo-Hebrew. Because publican is telling you about something Pacific. Something Pacific. And it has a Pacific name. That's the interesting part. And I'm going to share with you what it is. Because it only has one meaning. One meaning. And you can write it down. Going to make a lot of people upset. Because just as I said. Many people going to run to people. Who saying that they. I speak Paleo Hebrew. Which is Paleo Hebrew is a written language. They say I speak Hebrew. Which is Yiddish. I speak Greek. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem within, his head, within itself. But. Publican. Interesting. Publican has a meaning. And I'm going to tell you what the meaning is. The meaning means common people. That's all it means. So actually, let's, let's do something. Let's do something here. Just to help you. Just to help you out. We're going to go to Acts chapter eight, chapter uh, 10. We're going to go to Acts chapter 10. Actually, I'm going to go somewhere else too. Just, just to make sure we all good on this. Because this is a side note. Side note for a lot of my students. So we're going to look at this. So this is what he's saying, what Peter said. He says, and he said unto them, I know that is an unlawful thing that a man that is a follower of Christ, keep, keep, keep the understanding of what he, he's a follower of Christ, to keep company, to, to sit there to keep company, because he's supposed to be separated unto God. Understand what he's saying here. He says, or come unto another nation. That's what he's saying. Or going over to uh, these other nations. Meaning your Japheths and, and everything else. But what's it? He said, but God has showed me that I should call, I should not call any man a publican or unclean. But how do we, how do we know that it's saying that? I'm going to show it to you. Let's go back to the law. Because the law actually just clears it up for you. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a minute. We're going to look in the law. We're going to go to Luke, I mean Leviticus chapter 4. Pick it up at verse 27. Because it actually says the same thing here. The identical thing. And it's telling you right here. The same thing. It says, if any one of the Publicans. That's what it's actually saying. Any one of the publicans. Common people. That's all they're saying. Sin through ignorance, because that's what most people do. If you're common, most people commonly go into sin through ignorance. And it says, while he doeth somewhat against any other commandments of the Spirit of God concerning the thing he had he he had be done and be guilty. So it's telling you. Even if it's a publican, a common person, he's still going to be held for that sin. That's why you see even here, to know the kingdom of God is why he's saying this here. This is why this is why this is being said. Let me get to Acts and we're going to go to Acts. And we're going to see this. Acts chapter 10. And you see why he said, why well, Peter... Let me make it a little bit bigger. So that's why he tells Peter this. And we are ordered to teach his people. He said in the voice, speak to him a second time. He said, what God has cleansed, call not thou common. Don't call him one of the common people. Because you don't call him one of the common people. They sin him through ignorance. This is all he's telling him. That's why Cornelius sent him there. He sent those men there because a lot of us sin through ignorance. That's why I say you didn't come here by accident. A lot of us sin through ignorance. 
is the sin still count? 100 percent. But we can know how not to do that sin anymore. We shouldn't have no more conscience of that sin. So that's why it's saying that those are common people. That's why Peter was saying that. But Peter didn't know, OK, how that is unlawful. Actually, let's go down to it. Let's go down to verse 28. That's why Peter's saying this. And he says, this, I know how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a follower of Christ to keep company or come into another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man a publican or unclean. That's all he was saying. Or he's just saying common. A man common. Meaning what? Common people. Because common people will sin. Because they don't know him. But some people were seeking the, the dude to learn the truth. But just don't have the person put in front of them. That's why even when he said, he said, do you know what thou read it? He said, how can I accept some man guide me? That's why he says that. That's why all this is there. And Peter was a man who was learned. So since he was learned, God sent people to him to where he can show them how not to be sinning in ignorance. So if they do sin, they're going to sin and they know what the law is. That's why Hebrews 10, 26 tell you. If we will fully sin after we receive knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. That's why that says that if we do it, once we have the truth, now everything relies on us. That's why this happens. And if we sin through ignorance, 100 percent. Some going to offer things through ignorance, 100 percent. And. You be showing the parable. What do you get? A hundredfold. Once you know what is sin and what is not that you did in ignorance, now you can get back. Some people are going to come back in 100-fold. Some of them are going to come back in 60-fold. Some of them are going to come in 130-fold. That's how some of them are going to come. So the parable is always this. It's always this. In Amos, in picking it up in chapter 8. In chapter 8, we're going to look at right here at verse 1. Right at verse 1. It's right at verse 1. It says this. It says, Thus have the Spirit of thy God showed unto me, and remember a basket of summer fruit. Wow. Of summer fruit. We need to really pay attention to what's actually getting ready to happen here. To understand the parable, he showed us a basket of summer fruit. But why is he saying that? Let me let me let me pull some stuff to where we can get some help with it. I wonder. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure that we're getting this all together. In Proverbs chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. And I'm going to show you something. Which I get on my class about quite a bit. And we don't do it. And it says. Go to the end. <clears throat> now. The people who's in my classes. They know I do this. And it's probably the first time I'm showing them this. But they don't know why. Where I get that thought pattern from. And, he, and I tell people. Go outside and study an ant. And I tell them this. I can tell them to put that in the, in the, in the chat and they'll tell you yes, yes, yes. Because I tell them this consistently. Study an ant. Why? That's what I ask you to do. If I'm asking you to do something, at least take the time to do it. I'm not your Lord. I'm just an example. I'm just showing you something to where you can learn from. Can't make you do it. I can ask you to. And... It's telling you, go to the end. Study it. Because we need to study the similitudes of this end. It's why I tell us to do this. This is why I hold us to this. And it says, thou sluggard. But why are you saying that? And well, he's saying it, but I'm just agreeing with him. I just agree with whatever, whatever he said. I agree to it because he's telling you this right in front. The sluggard is meaning what? You're slowful and lazy. You're slowful and lazy. 
We want everything handed to us. Tell me we don't. We want everything handed to us. We don't want nothing. We don't want to have to put in no work in any kind of way to do anything. Just tell us what it is. Give me this. Don't want to put in no work. Just tell me what it is. And never considering the ways of this. So it's telling you consider her ways to be wise. Go look at the ant and understand her ways to where you can get some wisdom. We, no, no, no. No, Elder Johnson know the spiritual meaning of these words. He just needs to just tell it to us. Really? Really? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. And most people think the same as with um, Dr. Shaul. He, he didn't give us anything either. Make sure you had to put in some work. We're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and pick it up at verse 10. Saying this, and, and we're going to find out something. Really important. It says, For even when we were with you, as we command you, that if any would not work, if you ain't willing to put in no work, no study, no nothing, neither should he eat. Neither should he learn. It's slowful. Don't want to put in no work? Shouldn't even learn it. Don't want to do, do no studies? Okay, what you learning for? This is why he holds to this. If you ain't willing to put in no work, neither should he. Go look at the ant. Go look at the ant. And I'm not saying go look at it for fun, just telling you to go do it. No, I'm telling you, seriously, go watch the ant. Go watch him. If you're wise enough, you consider the ways of that ant. Did you know an ant was set in his ways from the beginning of God? Set in his ways. Let's look at something. Let's look at verse 8. It says, Now the ant, which have no guide, because it's already set, just like the sun. Just like the sun. The, he has a set thing in him to do something. And it has no guide. No overseer or ruler. That's why I tell you the same thing. I am not a ruler over you. I'm not your shepherd. As people want to sit there and say, oh, people pass as shepherds. I'm just an example to you. And that example is to show you I can go through this Bible and show you what these things mean. And then that can give you hope of what my reason is to where you will go and you going to want to do the same thing and do your studies and learn the same way. And then as you need help along the way, I have to help you. Not I, I should help you. I have to help you. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. I have to do it. Why? He's giving you pastors that shall feed you with knowledge and understand. I have to help you. And if and if you want his, then that's what we know. You want his, and I don't. <laughs> I don't need to run. I don't need to run into him on a bad day. Go watch the ant. Watch how this ant running. The ant don't have no taskmaster over him, telling him what to do or what to gather or overseers. All you see, and you don't see overseers, rulers, being their guide. It's already set in them. 
already set. Watch this. Watch this. It says, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. It's time to get it. That's the time to get your stuff. See, your bread is in the summer where the getting is good. However, some have rulers and overseers set over them. And they harvest in the winter. How they do it, I don't know. How they do it, I don't know, but they do it. But I already know what that harvest is. I already know what that harvest is. But the ant revealed to us the wisdom and one who gathers their food. And I tell you what, tell you what I'm going to ask you, and you think about it, especially the ones who are in the colder climate areas where in the wintertime you get snows and all that stuff. And you see ants in the summer. They harvesting. You tell me how many ants have you seen walking through the through the snow? Tell me how many ants you've seen walking through the snow. Looking at you talking about it's so cold out here. You ain't seen no ant out there, have you? How many ants have you seen out there during the winter months and this and it's raining and storm storming and all that? Telling you, man, it waiting on the bus, waiting on the train. Waiting on a Uber or or a Lyft, saying where where you going? You ain't seen no ant out there, have you? He didn't collect this fruit in the summer. He didn't did his harvest already. But we can't, and he don't have. In the worst part, he don't have no guide, no no overseer, no ruler over him. But we have to. But they say, well, I'm your shepherd. I'm your shepherd. Listen to me, really. And he telling you when to harvest your fruit. Wow. Something to, I'm going to show you something to consider. Something to, to where we just all need to consider within ourselves. We can find this over at John chapter 10. Picking it up at verse 20. And this is something that you need to consider. Others said these are not the words of him that have a devil. Think about that. Many will even say that me, myself, and everybody who's been knowing me for years know I teach directly out the Bible. And you can see what I teach. And they'll sit there and tell you, I teach a cult, I teach out the devil. I'm not teaching directly out the Bible. The only problem they have a problem with is that I can go through this Bible and show you what it means. Never pointing you to me. Always pointing you back to Christ. Because just like I said, I can get you to McDonald's. I can't get you to heaven. Christ is the only one descended. He's the only one ascended. He the one know where to go. I don't know where to go. I'm just being up. He did to me. He gave me the spirit to where I can understand these words. I can tell you what he's saying. So I can tell you the details of our covenant of our contract. That's what I do. And these will say that has some will say he has a devil, but it tell you those are not the words that have the devil. So it tells you this. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? That's a fair question. That's a fair question. And same as here. We have a lot of people who came here and tell you that they couldn't understand this. They couldn't understand that. They couldn't understand this. And now they understand this and they understand that. Some will sit there and say that they had came here and they've been in the church for 20, 30, 40 years. And they understand more in two months than they did in all the 40 years that they've been in the church. They was blind and now they see. Did I have anything to do with it? Not, not one bit. Not one solitary bit. He said, you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, and he's going to rest in you, and he's going to do the work. Not you, he is. So I have nothing to do with it. 
I have no credit. That's the point. He's telling me he's going to pay me something. I'm good with that. So I don't need what you offer. And how we made the open the eyes of the blind. Yeah. Because many people see. Many people see. Watch what, watch what goes on here. In verse 22. And he says that he says, including it was at Jerusalem, the learning of the dedication. So that's what actually feasts mean. That's what feasts actually mean. They got the spiritual side to it, but that's generally what it means. And he's telling you this right up front. He says, including it was winter. So we see it's a problem. So the learning in the practice of the separation at the time of the winter, see, for some reason why Yahweh said it is not. And for us to understand the end, hopefully in your time. In fact, let's, let me put a caveat here. I want to put a caveat right here. And I want to show you this to where we can keep this one in mind. In Mark chapter 13 and picking up at verse 18. And he's saying this. And this is why when he, when, when Yahweh Shai give parable, we have to go to a, more places on here to where you can really get it. It says, including pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Because ain't nobody there. You're knocking on the door and nobody home. Play your fight, don't be in the winter. Because you're going to stumble and many and pretty much everyone is going to fall. If you're thinking you're going to get the knowledge in the winter. Because it's not going to happen. In fact, it says, how should I walk in the temple and Solomon's porch. You need to know what that's talking about. Verse 24 tells you this. Tells you this. It says, Then came the followers of Christ round and about him, including said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt? Providing thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Really? Really, tell us plainly. Wanting plain speech for their understanding spoken. Think about it. But he answered them. He still answered them. It doesn't matter. He said this. He said, I told you. You see, Ray, I told you. And ye believe not. I told you plainly. It was a parable, but you didn't believe it. The works that I do in my father's name, in his way, they bear witness of me. I told you. They were blind and they just wasn't one of his. So they didn't understand the doctrine that it was taught, that it was teaching. This is why it can be much confusing when you have these things going on. Because the scripture is going to bear witness of the truth. Bear witness of the living God, which is Christ, Jehovah. He told Moses, he said, hey, they knew me by God Almighty, but my name Jehovah, I was not known to them. He's telling you who he is all the time. But people is going to be confused and they're going to be seeking a man for their salvation and they're just not going to see it. People are going to say, well, they'll still get there. No, they won't. If you believe that Jesus, the man, is God Almighty 
in the God or one of the Godheads, then I promise you, when you sit there and you stand in judgment, you are not, he going to say, well, you were close enough, you in. No, you going, you going, you going to the hot place. Because he said, I will not give my glory to another. And you did. And why are you saying something very clear here? Get to verse 26. And he's telling you, ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, you're not one of them. You're not one of his sheep. Don't ever think that he's got to sit there and he's going to play this game. Oh, well, that's close enough. That's close enough that we're good. That's close enough for you. No, he's not saying that. You don't hear his voice. So how can you be obedient to his word? You don't hear his voice. In fact, he tells you this in verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. They're going to follow what he's doing. This is the problem that we have. And, and then what he does, he gives you these feeders, these men, these messengers, to where they're going to gather. People are going to gather around them to where they can feed. In the summer. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Let's look at this a little bit closer. Matthew chapter 13. In verse 38, verse 38, and it says, I want you to see it all on one. Verse 38, it says, the field, which is where we are even today. The field is the world. And that's the end of that thought. That's the end of the thought. So we got the lay down but then you have people who teach to say if you want to go to the pilgrimage we're going to go back to israel which you're going back to people but they didn't change it over the land or we're going to take you into the wilderness which we're going to hang in the wilderness which this is the wilderness because the world is the field yeah just like i told you and then it says the good seed the good seed pay attention to what he's saying here the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The good seed. Because that good seed is going to grow fruit to which he's going to pick from. And then it says, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. He's laying it all out for us. But he says something real particular here. We are particularly here. Watch this. We are particularly here. And he, he don't say this much. He says this really, I think, once or twice. He says, the enemy that sold them is the devil. Those tares. But watch what he says here. The harvest is the end of the world. That's what he's telling you. That's the end of the world. But watch this. And the reapers. are the messengers. He don't say that. The reapers are the messengers. A parable within a parable. But what he's saying is this. The ones who hear his voice, they're going to crowd around him and those reapers get them. The ones that goes out, those are the tares. Those things. So he gather them and brings them into his, his barn. That's why he's saying it even in this way. That's how he's catching a lot of people. That's the catch. In fact, let's look at verse 28. Those reapers is giving you something. I give unto them eternal life through those reapers. Reapers don't have nothing to do with anything. I'm just using their bodies to, as a living sacrifice to do this. And they should never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Can't nobody get you out of out his hands. So this is the point on what we need to really get. So same thing with this 
summer fruit. And he tell Amos something. When we actually let me see if I can get this here. So the same thing he says this here in verse two. This is where the this is where the biggest problem is. Where he says some things here. He says, and he said, Amos, what seest thou? And Amos said, a basket of summer fruit. Because that's when all fruits going to be harvested. Then said the Spirit of God unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. This is a parable that's being worked out in real life. That's being worked out in real life. And he tells something, because that's the end of that thought, but what he says here is hard to swallow. He says, I will no, not again pass by them anymore. He's done. You have a basket of fruit. And the time you to gather them is in the summer. So here's the million dollar question for each and every one of us. Here's the million dollar question to where we can get the moral and understanding of this parable. And I promise you, some people are going to put some stuff in there real quick. And again, you, 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 you speak in something that you shouldn't be saying. Because these ain't something where you just, oh, let me just show them how smart I am. No, that's, that's the dumbest thing in the world to do. Don't do that. But he says this. I got a question for you. We're going to see this. <clears throat> Because he asked him, what do we see? Now, Amos and we know Uncle Idris, they was good friends. And Uncle Idris says some things here. <clears throat> and we know here, Christ spoke to him. And we want to understand this here. We want to understand what's going on here. It says, he's not going to pass by anymore. He says, who then could go into the sea? and look upon it including to rule it I personally want you to think of this I personally want you to think about that if you can go you can go anywhere in any part of the world and you can't say that America has to rule over all the seas Russia can't say they have rule over all the seas China can't say they have rule over all the seas who can look upon the sea and rule it as one as one because it's broad that's the point but it has a lot to do with this no one can do this but we have to understand the parable the sea goes from one end to the other and no one's had rule over it so tell me how many and so many of us See that broad, wide way and not go the other way. Because we see this big, wide world and so we go. But it says, if he went through, if he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? That's the question. He's asking you two questions. And I'm going to help us out of here a lot of it. <clears throat> On a lot of it, it's in Matthew chapter 7, picking it up at verse 14. It says this. It says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Interesting, isn't it? It says, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few. Few. But we go the other way because it's broad. Think about that. 
I, w- I want you to really take the time and re- really just think to yourself and personally understand what this Bible is trying to tell you. Tell me. Tell me to yourself. When a woman gives birth to a baby, the baby comes through a a narrow canal or do it come through a wide canal? Think about that. So the women know. So they're going to come through either a narrow canal or a wide canal. And women are going to say, they're going to tell you, the baby comes through a narrow canal. And as the baby coming through this narrow canal, the woman is going to suffer some sorrow, some travail on having that child. So why are so many people looking on the Broadway? You follow me? Let's look at something. Let's look at something there. We're going to go to John to, to help us out. Verse chapter 16. We're going to pick it up at verse 21. And 21 should give us some some help here. And we're going to see something. So even though that the baby got to come through the woman through this narrow canal. We know this. We know this. It says this, a woman, when she is in travail, exactly what we're saying, have sorrow, exactly what I was saying. It says, because her hour is come, the time for this baby to be born. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for the joy uh, joy that a man is born into the world. But did it come through the narrow or did it come through the wide? She wouldn't have travailed if she came if it came through the wide. It only travailed because it came through the narrow. So meaning that a lot of anguish, a lot of things are gonna happen going that way. Meaning it didn't take no shortcuts and it's coming. How can you reach the broad and you never came through the narrow? The same reason why Christ said the end is come upon my people of Israel and I would not pass by them again because the hour is come. Time for this birth to happen. Time for this birth to happen. I'm going to show you. Let me try to help you with this parable here. And and we're going to look at Micah chapter 4. In verse 10. And good luck, I can't I want to get the whole thing on there. Okay, we can get the whole thing here. Because Christ is speaking a lot. It says, be in pain. Why? In labor to bring forth old daughter of Zion. Talking about the children of Israel. Right there, right up front. It says, like a woman in travail, same thing. So it says, for now thou shalt go forth out of the city, including thou shalt dwell in the field, where you're going to get fed, including thou shalt be given un- even to Babylon, there shall thou be delivered, there be the Spirit of God shall redeem thee from the hands of thy enemies. Because that's what you're going to be amongst them. I'm telling you right here, right up front, right in the parable. Right in the parable. So why is people running to all these other places? If the Spirit is telling you, you're going to go through some things. You're going to have some issues. Because this is preparing you to where you need to prepare and make sure your harvest is in the summer. And don't let it be in the winter. Winter, Because it's in the winter. Do you know that's the time when that second eagle like to play? Well, I did a teaching and they blocked a lot of stuff 
on the first one of the eagle. But this is the second eagle. Which is not good. And if you notice, eagles love hunting in the winter. Did anyone know that? You look in a lot of places, especially like in, um, you go to Alaska and places like that, and people got them in some of these states. In the winter, eagles do their best hunting. You know why? That's when you need food the most. So they have to, so many animals have to leave their covering, their protection to be out in the open. And when they're out in the open, you have that eagle out there. He's out there. And that's his, his best hunting. Because no matter what, what's going to bring you out is starvation, hunger. Give that eagle everything he need to do to get you. Not where you can sit in your own covering and wait till winter is over. You out of, in the winter. And the eagle's sitting there saying, and the eagle's sitting there saying, it's time for me to eat. And all you got to do is pick and choose. In the summer, you got to watch it because they can duck out and they got to watch out and, and there's many of them out there. But in the winter, he can pick and choose. Because everybody who didn't gather their fruit in the basket, into the right fruit and put it in the basket in the winter, I mean in the summer, you got a problem when it gets to the winter. Because you got to go out and get you some food. So we had these problems. And he said he's not passing along here anymore. He's not coming along here no more. Verse 3 tells you, The songs of the temple shall be of howling in that day. The temple is the body of God, not in some church building. This again is where a lot of people get it all mixed up. That's why he says that. So it says, And the songs of the temple shall be howling in that day, said the Spirit of thy God. There should be many dead bodies in every place. Exactly the point. They should cast them forth with silence. Why did he say that? Now, I'm going to show you why he's saying, why he's saying what he's saying. I'm going to show you why he's saying what he's saying. Actually, let me pull this one. We're going to look at Amos. Chapter, uh, chapter 5. We're going to look at 23. Because it says this. It says, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. The songs of the temple. It's telling you right up front. It's all together. And this is what people do. So as you humming, you humming songs of death. You think you humming songs of life. You think you singing songs of life, but you're actually singing songs of death. And he don't want to hear it. That's why he said, I'm not passing by him no more. Well, I still like those songs. I still like, okay, that's cool. He don't want to hear it. Well, I still do this for my, okay, that's fine. You do it. He's not going to hear it. Those are songs of death. We're here to do a job. Not here to constantly, let me do this one, a song on this one, a song on this one. He's telling you, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. Not, I'm, he don't have the time for it. He do not have the time for it. So he's telling you what he's doing. He's telling you up front what he's doing. In fact, let's go to Amos 7. Because he, he said a lot in Amos. A lot of, a lot of stuff in Amos he, he's dropping on us. And he's saying, he's telling you why he's doing what he's doing. And the Spirit of God said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? 
So now he's asking Amos, what do you say, Amos? He said, a plumb line. I said, a plumb line. And then the Spirit of God, we know what's going on when he's sitting there saying that. So the Creator said, remember, I set the plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. Now you see he's saying this again. I will not again pass by them anymore. He's telling you this a second time when you get to chapter 8. He's done. Why? The main problem we have is this. This is our problem. And he's not going to continually do it. In the process of time, came to pass that Cain, we can remove Cain. Whatever each and every one of our names are, we can put our name there. Because no matter what, and what we got to remember is this. When you sit there, and you marginalize in your own mind a reason to do what you want to do, no matter what, because you're going to think it's right, and then you're going to try to hold me. Well, if I want to sing that song, I can do it, then you sing the song. You do what you want to do. You got one soul to save. And all I need to do is feed his people. So if you decide you want to do what you do, you do what you do. When it comes time for him separating, you shouldn't have no issues based on what you did. Because in the process of time, whatever the ones you want to put that name there brought fruit of the ground. An offering unto the Spirit of God. That's what many of us going to do. Many of us is going to do. So I'm going to leave you with this for you to think about it. We're going to go to Mark chapter 8 and picking it up one more time in this spot and start at verse 19. And he's telling you, when he break the five loaves among 5,000, among 5,000, how many baskets of full fragments took ye up? It depends on how well you understood this parable. It depends on how well you understood what I said. they said 12 they said 12 verse 20 says this and when the seven among 4,000 how many baskets of full fragments took ye up seven I promise you, many people, as I said, without thinking, is going to give answer to this. Based on what they know. Based on whatever they was taught previously. And I promise you again, they're going to be one million percent wrong. Every time. Because it's speaking about something that's very serious that we didn't know. Never factoring in the parable. Never factoring in the parable. This is the problem with each and every one of us. That we need to start taking the time, see what's out there, and factor in the entire thing at one time. 
So we will continue to know when we are sitting there dealing with God. We have to come to him and come to this word as a little child. And we need to understand it on the same level as a child to where we can apply ourselves to it to where we can remember this and understand it as a person, as a man, as a woman. So same thing, what we're going to do, we have the same opening that be in the back. You can look down in the comment section where in the uh, de description section, you'll see where we're going to have um, this opening for a short period of time. But we're going to be back in the uh, Zoom area where you can ask questions based on this teaching. You're more than welcome to come back here. Everything stands the same. I need to be able to see who I'm talking to. And we can go from there. And as I said, you know, the, um, the book for the Proverbs class and the Hebrews is now the way you can actually get it through us, which you can order it here, or if you want to get it through uh, Lulu, and I believe I'm thinking um, Amazon is actually going to have it up within the next day or two. So we want to make sure that we clearly get what's going on and make sure that you continue to know what's happening. So the same as tomorrow, we're going to be picking up on um, on the book of Romans as well as we'll be going through that. But we'll be picking that up over at King James Bible University. So I appreciate everyone that came through here. And, and same thing, if um, you're more than welcome to come to the back, if you have any questions or new people, we welcome you any question that you may have. And um each and every person, you know, just make sure you think on this. Don't don't sit there and try to jump to a quick understand, oh, this, oh, 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 it's this. As soon as you do that, this is our problem. Same as Peter, he had to think on what that vision he has seen should mean. We need to think on these parables which we have seen should mean. And I promise you, you think on it, then you'll know why those loaves was taken up and what was happening. So with that, I say to each and every person, I'll be looking for you guys, the, um, the ones who's going to come in the back. You can see the link down there. It says comment and questions. You can see the, the, um, the, uh, the, link, the link for Zoom back there. And you're more than welcome to join us back there. So... Until tomorrow, I say to each and every person, until next time, Shalom.